right, so we got an individual, actually in my local area, lives in Miami, making four thousand a month, expenses two thousand one fifty, total debt thirteen thousand forty two, not much. Good cash flow one thousand eight fifty. He's got thirty nine thousand in savings. He's a thirty nine year old male, and he wants to establish a life insurance policy simply to save money. This guy, he works, but he also, on his downtime, is a Forex day trader, I believe. Either he's a Forex trader or he does the, or he does the stocks. One of the two, I forgot. But he's into that world of uh, trading Forex stocks, currencies. He's, he's into that. And he's pretty good, he tells me. And he, you know, has a, he has a mentor, he has a coach, someone teaching him. So he's learning that his, his goal is to pretty much like double what he's making right now. So, you know, he wants to double his income. Cool. We can do that. And he simply wants, because this is where he's making money, right? So this is, this is where he makes the money. There's no disputing or trying to compare infinite banking against Forex. You will lose all the time. When it comes to Forex, stocks, the marketplace, that is the place to make a lot of freaking money other than real estate, right? So you got real estate, which is like more secure, I would say, um, but with the proper information, education, training, and dedication, you can really lower your risk of what people call gambling, right? They call this gambling, which can be looked at, you know, two different perspectives. You know, people call it gambling, but yet they have 401ks, you know? Call it gambling, but your pension funds are funded through that. They call it gambling, your TSPs, your government plans, your health care, your benefits, your time off, your workman's comp, all that is funded through there. It's made there and it's stored here in the IBC, right? So all the major corporations and banks, they store the money in IBC, right? In policies, in life insurance policies but then they take the money out and they make it over here and then of course real estate, right? They make it in real estate as well. And then they send the money back here so it can keep growing tax-free. Then they pull it out and they give you a 401k, a pension plan, a this, a that, an IRA, a Roth, all that. Let's do some numbers here. So he's putting in 30, we set up a guardian and a mass, 39,000 a year for, I did between seven and 14 years funding, right? So policy, we got guardian and mass. We don't have it set up just yet. We're checking this out. So funding 39 a year and the premium of course, 3,900. Let me see what the death benefit is on that. If he funds it for longer periods of time, the death benefit would be a little bit higher. If it's for a short period of time, it would be lower. So that's just something to know there. So we got a mech of just over 40K. That's if I wanted to fund it for a little bit longer. So we have that mech a little bit higher. And the death benefit, 39 year old. I have between, Guardian's a little bit higher. The mass mutual was at 1.25 million. That's cool. Starting cash value, 34,000. Cool. And so all he simply wants to do is whatever money he has in free cash flow. Uh, the very first move, I was just telling, hey, you know, as soon as we establish it, just borrow from the policy and wipe that out. Get your cash flow up, right? Get rid of that, that stupid debt. Some of it is on zero interest, but I was like, hey, as soon as it, 
as soon as it expires, you know, make your chunk from policy, right? And, and pay off all debt. Just do that first, right? That's simple. Any cash that he makes from here, so his plan is, uh, what, 4000 a month in income per year. What is that? 4000 times 12, that's 48 k a year. And if he wants to basically make 4000 a month in, in trading, then I'll definitely have 39 to dump over here. And that was his plan. He's like, whatever I make in the trading, I want to have a place that I could store that money for the next couple of years. Right. And then from there, I would build this policy up, borrow from it to purchase real estate. I said, what a cool idea. Right. So, so let's, how do I want to write that? Right. So what is it? Step one, just pay off that debt, get your little cash flow game, whatever it is from it, right? Just get rid of that. So you'll have that policy loan outstanding. You'll have free cash flow here because there's no debt. So whatever, so his cash flow on the conservative side, cash flow per year is 22,200 on the low end. So if he already, so for the first year, I'm able to dump that 39,000 into a policy because he already has initial capital, right? He already has it. Cool. Dump it into the policy. Now for the next 12 months, I'm going to have cash flow. A couple of options is he can either use the cash flow directly and send it over here right to the day trading each and every month he puts another 1800 in his you know standard account or micro account whatever he's using i think it's micro mini and standard when it comes to forex and then stocks i believe you have to have capital already i forget how much that number is but um however he, whatever platform he's using let's just say he's dumping principal each and every month over here using his cash flow. Okay, cool. You know? And then whatever comes out per month, he could be either reinvesting it back in, right? To, to try to just keep flipping it, flipping it for the next 12 months. And the goal would be to accumulate at least 39,000 in 12 months. So that let's say he puts 22,200 in over the course of 12 months and then let's say he doubles it. 22,200 doubles it it becomes 44,400. Okay. Of that 44,400 minus 39 goes to policy, right? Goes to policy. So he's left with 5,400, which can go back there for the new year, right? So second year, he's got 5,400 over there. We now have 39K, you know, uh, plus that first year, 34. So let's say just 34 plus 34 cash value. Year two cash value, let's say, is just under 70K in the first year, being conservative, right? And. Let's say we take that cash flow that I know I'm going to make the second year, but instead of waiting to dump it in, he could take out a policy loan for 22200 where I'm going to earn 6% and maybe pay 
somewhere around 5% on that money. So I'm going to earn 6, but I'm also going to pay 6. And I'm also earning 4 to 5.85% on the entirety of the, of the difference of 70,000 22,200. So 47,800 will be earning, you know, 4 to 5.85%. The other 22,200 is earning 6. So 47,800 times 4%, 1912, 22,200 times 6%, 1,332. 22,000, 22,200 times 5% loan cost, loan interest, 1,110. So I'll pay that, but I'm going to earn this in the second year. I didn't even count whatever I earned the first year. So I've got 1,912 plus 1,332. 3,244 but I paid 1,110 on the loan. So I'll still have all that money. So 3,244 plus 70,000. At the end of the year, I'll have 73,244, even if I took out a loan right from the beginning, that 13K. Let's say I didn't even pay that back. So I'm earning 6% on that and 6% on that. But I still have the total amount of cash value in there as if I never touched it. So now I got that there, and I take this 22,200 and I throw it in the, in the trading. So I got 22,200 plus 5,400. That's 27,600. And I'm going to cash flow again, 1850 times 12, 22,200. Okay, 22,200 plus the 27,600. Now I got 49,800. And let's say I double my money again, times two. That's 99,600. If I took this amount, doubled it first, or, or added it up, right? Added up that, and then doubled it through trading now I got $99,600. So that comes right back here, year three. I got 99,600, 99,600 minus 39,000 for the third year, right? Dump another 30 in, 39 in. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Let's say it was another 34, and I know it's not, it's gonna be more, but 34 plus 73, 1,244. Now I'm at 107,000, being conservative, in cash value, year three. 99,600 minus 39 leaves me with 60,600, right? And I, and I still never paid this back. Look, didn't pay that back, didn't pay that back. Still earning the same money. Okay. At this point, with 60 grand, yeah, you know, I can go ahead and just replenish the loan, right? So let's say I did the 39 and I replenished. So in year three, I replenished the 22,200 and the 13,482. 13,482 plus 22,200 plus that interest, 1,110. Let me add another thousand bucks interest just to be conservative. Thirty-seven thousand seven ninety-two on top of my principal amount of thirty-nine k that I dumped in the policy. Let's say I did that. So sixty thousand six hundred minus thirty-seven thousand seven ninety-two. I'm left with twenty-two eight oh eight. So I got twenty-two thousand. 808. Okay. Okay, we're in year three. Policy loans are restored to zero. 
I've max funded the policy for a third time. I've got 22,808 left over after restoring the policy and max funding it. So this 2208, throw it back into the trading. I'm going to make 22,200 for the year in cash flow. This is if my income doesn't change, stays the same, right? Conservative. 22,200 plus 22,808 equals $45,008. And if I have 107,244 in cash value on the low end, well, let's take that number. Let's take that number and do what, guys? Times it by 66%. Why not? Why not? 107, 244 times 66%. That's 70,000, 7810. So 45,008 plus 70,000, 781.04. That's 115,789.04 in trading right trading and i double that this is year four year three going into year four i double that it becomes two hundred thirty one thousand five seventy eight and eight cents guess what we have a problem we got too much money that we made now and nowhere to store it what do we do well at this point we can start looking into establishing a second policy at that point. 231,578.08, that was on the low end. What if he tripled his money one of those three years or the fourth year? That could be huge, right? So at that point, that's when I would say, okay, we can go ahead and start a new policy. By that point, you're 43, right? 42 or 43 years old. And we can start a new policy as long as he stays healthy, go with Mass or Guardian, whoever, and keep this show on the road. So he'll have a place to store the money, to never lose it, to keep earning it at a tax-free rate. And then he's borrowing from that money and he's giving it, we're putting it in a location where we can actually make money, where we take risk. This is no risk, right? Infinite banking, no risk. Over here is risk. Takes education, dedication, motivation, strategy, you know, and consistency. Makes the money, right? And another location that you can really offset a lot of your taxes and costs is by, you know, uh, we could establish a second policy, which that second policy could be used for maybe funding real estate. So he can have two separate policies. He, has, he continues the system, right, where he's borrowing and leveraging from the first policy to do day trading, but maybe for some passive income, right, passive, he could take some of this to establish the second policy to borrow a percentage of that to acquire some real estate that would create passive income, takes no work for him to do, it's just paycheck money, mailbox money, I mean, right? Mailbox money. He will uh, offset a lot of his taxes and costs and obviously building a nice overall portfolio with insurance and activity income, passive income. This guy looks like he's building a solid kingdom. 